Good day, guys. It's Avi here, and I'm with my mate, Veronica. Hi. What are we doing, Ron? We're getting into nature. We're getting into nature. Ha <laughs> ha, sad. I got us a special guest. She's going to help us get our game on point. So, woo, and stay tuned. All right. <laughs> so, do you actually know where we're going right now? Uh, let me just open up maps. I don't think we have signals. Okay guys, so we made it, and as promised, I have my special guest here, a real BC Park Ranger, Elise. Hi. Okay Elise, you need to be honest with me here. I've been using my hashtags and promoting you guys like crazy. Have you seen it? I can't say that I have, but I am really excited to talk to you about day hiking today. So Elise, let's talk hiking. What do we need to know? There's some work you have to do before you even get to a park. You should check our website, since parks can change day to day, season to season. We've got web pages for each specific park with up-to-date information. Didn't know that. Something to remember for next time. And in BC, the weather can change really rapidly, whether you're on the coast, in the mountains, or anywhere in between. It's important to note that the higher you go in elevation in the mountains, you're going to experience very different weather than at lower elevations. Or you could just sort by reason on Instagram to check all that stuff out. What you see on social media isn't always the reality, so it's really important to make sure you do extra research as well. So let's talk hiking. Okay, not quite yet. There's a lot of important things we need to do before you even get in the car to go hiking. The first thing you need to do is make sure you leave your hiking plans with a responsible friend. Let them know where you're going and when you're expected to be home, even if it's for a short day hike. It's one of the most important things you can do to make sure you make it home safe at the end of the day. That's actually a really good point. But I haven't had cell service for like two hours. <gasps> what about bringing a dog? Good question. Our furry friends are allowed in some parks, but not all. And if they are allowed, they'll be required to be on a leash. This is for the safety of your dog, for yourself, uh, for other visitors, as well as the environment. All right, it's time for hiking. Just one more thing, and I promise it's one of the most important. Make sure you pack the essentials. Think of these as your survival essentials. What would you need to have with you if you were on the trail longer, or even overnight? And? We are ready to talk about hiking. Yes. Millions of people visit BC Parks each year, and some parks are busier than others. It's important to note that if you are going to be visiting a busy park during peak times, you should be prepared for crowds. Sure, it can be hard, but try to stay friendly with your fellow hikers. A smile, a nod, or a wave can go a really long way. Oh, Hi. Hey. Oh, hey. Hi. How's it going? Hi. Oh, hey. Hey. Yeah, wow, this place is Do beautiful. Do you think they I hope so. I really I hope, hope so. so. Next up, parks are not self-cleaning, so you need to make sure you pack out all of your garbage and all of your food. This helps keep our parks clean and our wildlife safe. And some people don't know that leaving food or garbage in a park can attract animals like bears. I mean, I'm not planning on feeding any bears, but I have seen people feeding adorable birds, so what about the cuter, I'm not gonna maul you animals? Although it's tempting to feed cute animals like gray jays or chipmunks, human food is really unhealthy for them, and fed animals are more likely to be preyed upon. So we've talked about pollution like garbage, but let's quickly talk about noise pollution. People don't just come to parks for the sights, they also come for the sounds of nature. Uh, what are the rules? Uh, oh, for like doing your business. Yeah, like if nature's calling. Where should it be falling? Oh, gotcha. Well, if you're near an outhouse, that's your ideal choice. And remember, it's always handy to have an extra roll of toilet paper, just in case. And just remember, the outhouse is not a place for your garbage. Just number one, number two, and toilet paper. That's it. Can I, can I borrow yours? Um, I was gonna ask to borrow yours. Oh. And if you really need to go when an outhouse isn't around, just make sure you're far enough away from trails, campsites, and most importantly, water. Make sure you dig a hole four inches wide and six to eight inches deep. When you're finished, make sure you cover it up and pack out your toilet paper. Make sure when you get home to check in with that friend to let them know you've made it home safe and sound. Well guys, I don't know about you, but I learned a lot today. Oh, totally. And I think we've definitely upped our game, don't you think? You're both well on your way. 